communication today is predominantly carried out through email. Sending an email is quick and easy, sometimes a bit too quick and too easy. In this video, you'll learn how to communicate properly using email in a business context. This includes adding a signature to your email, using polite introduction and closing phrases, and writing it precise and to the point, and eliminating spelling errors altogether. A proper email message sent in a business context should have a signature with your contact details. This way people know how to get hold of you by just looking at your email. Using the email signature is a great way to extend your marketing, but all organizations have different policies when it comes to email signatures, so just make sure that you know what the guidelines are in your organization. Hi, I'm so sorry to interrupt, I just wanted to let you know that if you're annoyed by the ads in this video, you can access our tutorials ad-free by getting a subscription to businessproductivity.com or signing up for one of our many courses on platforms such as Udemy, CyberU, and Vimeo On Demand. I also wanted to take this opportunity to tell you a bit more about Storials. Storials, which stands for Story-Based Tutorials, is our video package offering for organizations that want to increase employee productivity using Office 365. With Storials, organizations can inspire, motivate, and educate users on effective use of Office 365 by showcasing real-life best practices. Finally, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channels, Business Productivity and Storials. Here you will also find my video blog, Succeed in the Digital Workplace as well as other videos that can help you increase your productivity. If you have any questions or comments, please post them here and I'll do my very best to get back to you. With that, let's go back to the tutorial. Thank you for watching. To add a signature to your email, click New Email and under the Message tab, click Signature and then Signatures. Click New and give your email signature a name. I'll name this signature Business and click OK. Now you can write your signature directly here in the text box or, as I prefer, you can edit your signature in Word and then just copy it from there. Here is my email signature that I've created in Word. To add icons with links to social media pages, click Insert and then Online Pictures. In the Bing Image Search text box, search for the social media logo. I'll write Facebook logo here. I'll select the logo and insert it. Under the Format tab in the Size section, I'll change the width to 0.2. Then I'll right-click and select Hyperlink. Here I'll enter the address to our company Facebook page. Then I'll do the same for all other social media pages I want to add. If you've used someone else's email signature as a template, double check the hyperlink of the email address so that it's the same as the displayed text. I'll mark the signature, right click and copy. Then I'll open up the email signature text box, right click and select to paste keeping the source formatting. There, that looks good. In the new messages drop down, I'll select my newly created business signature. And then I'll click OK. Now, if I click Signature, the business signature I just created is visible and I can just click it to insert it into my email. And the next time I open up a new email, the signature is there from the start. Let me go to my draft folder to see a number of email that I'm working on. Email should be written to the point, without unnecessary abbreviations and without spelling mistakes. Here I've drafted an email to a potential customer who's contacted us through our website. The subject line should clearly communicate what the email is about. Think of it as a summary of the email. The salutation depends on how well you know the person you're sending the email to and of course where in the world you're doing business. Different countries have different salutation conventions. I don't know the gentleman I'm sending this email to, so I'll use the greeting salutation, Dear Mr. Hang. It's also very important that you check your email messages for spelling errors. By default, the spell checker is turned on in Outlook, so you can see a red squiggly line under the words that are incorrect. 
I can quickly fix my mistakes by right-clicking the word and selecting the suggested spelling. In addition to checking spelling as you type, you can configure Outlook to alert you before sending out email with errors. If I click Send here, Outlook will open up a spell check window, giving me the opportunity to correct my misspelled word. I'll click Change, and then the email is sent. To configure spelling options in Outlook, go to the File menu, Options, and then Mail. Make sure that Always Check Spelling Before Sending is marked. This way, you minimize the risk of sending an email with spelling errors. Click Spelling and Autocorrect to see more options. Mark the option to also mark grammar errors. Click OK and then OK again. Here I have an email that I'm sending to an existing customer who called me and asked me to send a proposal and suggested dates for an on-site productivity workshop for his team. In this case, I'm on a first name basis with a customer, so I'll just use the salutation, Dear Sean. When you write an email, try to be as clear as possible so that you leave no room for misunderstanding. Use bullets to list options that have no particular priority order. Use numbered lists if the items are listed in order of preference. I'll click send to send off the email. As you can see, I forgot to add the attachment with the proposal. Luckily, in Outlook 2013, Microsoft has added an attachment reminder. So if you've included words such as see attached or enclosed in the text of your email but not inserted an attachment, Outlook will show you the reminder. I'll click don't send and then I'll insert the proposal and send the message again with the attachment. Sometimes you send email that you desperately want to take back. In this case, I forgot to double check the name on the cover letter of the attached proposal. I'll go to my Send Items and look at the attachment. I'll select to preview it in the email window. And just as I feared, I sent the proposal with the wrong customer name on the cover sheet. If I open up the email and click File, I have the option to resend or recall the message. But unfortunately, in most cases, this does not work. Message recall only works on emails sent to people within your own organization if you're running Exchange. And even then, it's not certain that all criteria are met for it to be recalled. Let's see what happens when I try to recall this message. I'll click Recall this message, and then I'll select to Delete unread copies and replace with a new message, and click OK. In the email I sent, I'll remove the incorrect attachment and insert an updated, corrected proposal. And then I'll click Send again. Now, let's switch over to Sean's inbox to see what this looks like for him. As you can see in Sean's inbox, the email has not been recalled and replaced with a new one. Instead, he has three emails from me. The original email I sent, a message that has been generated automatically saying that I wish to recall the message, and finally the new updated email. By using message recall, you just add more visibility to your mistake, so in most cases, it's best not to use it and instead just send another corrected email. My final draft email is to some of my co-workers and it includes a number of action items. The people on the two row all have action items assigned to them. I have Peter on CC since he doesn't have any action items but he's involved in the project so he should be kept informed about what's going on. In order to properly communicate who does what by when, I've put the action items in a table. To insert an action list table in an email, click Insert, Table, and then mark three columns. In the first row, I'll write the column titles, Action Item, Owner, and Due Date. I'll change the shading to gray and make the text bold. To save time next time I want to use an action list table, I'll save this to my templates. To do that, I'll mark it, click Insert, Table, Quick Tables and select to save selection to Quick Tables Gallery. I'll keep the default name and click OK. Now, next time I want to add an action item table, I'll click Insert, Table, Quick Tables and select my action list table. Then I can just fill in the decided upon action items 
and then send off the email. Before I close down Outlook, I'm going to turn on an automatic reply since I'll be traveling for two days with limited time to respond to email. To add an automatic response in Outlook, click File and then Automatic Replies. This is only available if you use Outlook with Microsoft Exchange Server. Mark Send Automatic Replies and check the box to only send the message during a defined time range and set the dates and times for when you'll be away. In the message that I'm sending inside our organization, I'm telling them what I'm doing and how they can get hold of me. Then I'll go to the Outside My Organization tab. In this reply, I'll be a bit more formal. I'll provide contact details for the person acting in my absence. I'll also add my email signature, which is not included by default. The images I have in my normal email signature won't appear, so I've just included the most important details. I'll click OK to apply the settings. Next day when I travel, I can see an information bar in my inbox telling me that automatic replies are being sent for this account. I can easily turn them off again by clicking Turn Off. By following the advice in this video, I'm sure you'll be much more effective in your email communication.